everyone. Today's video is on breast cancer surgery. And this is a very complex, very deep topic. And we are really just going for a very basic overview of the fundamental options uh, for operations for breast cancer. So we'll start by describing those options. Then we'll talk a little bit about which situations these different options are used for. And then we'll finish up with a little bit of high yield anatomy that frequently comes up in the operating room. So first, anytime we're talking about cancer surgery, I like to review some terminology. So if this is our timeline of cancer surgery, surgery is only one part of this. There's, of course, uh, different types of therapy that frequently go along with surgery for cancer, um, like chemotherapy, radiation. If those come after surgery, those are called adjuvant therapies. And if they come before surgery, they are called neoadjuvant therapies. But again, today, we're really going to be zooming in on the surgery aspect. And we do surgery for two main reasons for breast cancer. We can try to control the primary lesion, remove that from the body. And we also want to look at the nodes or do more of a staging surgery, uh, looking at the axillary nodes. So when we're talking about these, we really have two options to deal with the primary lesion and two options to deal with the nodes. So if we start at most invasive and go to least invasive, our two options for primary are a mastectomy, which... Just like it sounds, you have a lesion in the breast. And so to get rid of this, you just take out the entire breast. And then you can do a partial mastectomy for your less invasive option. This can also be called BCT, uh, which stands for breast conserving therapy or a lumpectomy. But in that case, you have a lesion. And instead of taking out the whole breast, you just take out the lesion and a small amount of tissue around that and you're able to uh, conserve the breast. Now, in terms of dealing with the nodes, our most invasive option is what's called an axe dissection. And in that case, uh, if you have a lesion uh, in breast cancer, it typically most commonly spreads to the lymph nodes and lymph nodes it most commonly spreads to are the ones in the axilla. So we have some lymph node basins over here. And in axe dissection, we just remove all those lymph nodes. And the problem with that is that there's a high rate of side effects associated with removing um, all of this lymphatic tissue. Uh, there are issues with lymphedema in the arm on that side, as well as some risk to nerves. And so another option that's a little bit less invasive is called sentinel lymph node biopsy. And so in that case, we have this same setup here. You can imagine that there's different levels of lymph nodes in the breast. And if the cancer comes from the breast into this first line of lymph nodes, we call these the sentinel lymph nodes because it would have to get to this lymph node and then pass to the next and then pass to the next. So if there's cancer over here in this lymph node, it must have come from one of these lymph nodes first. And so based on that theory, if we take out these first draining lymph nodes, these sentinel nodes, uh, there can't be, and they're negative for cancer, then we know there's almost certainly not cancer uh, in the rest of the lymph node basins. And so then we don't have to take out all the rest of these nodes, do that dissection and have the associated risk of side effects, uh, which can be quite high. For example, lymphedema is typically around 15% uh, for an axillary dissection. And that's a quite debilitating complication. So a, a little bit more detail about a sentinel lymph node biopsy and how that's done. So we have our primary lesion, we have these draining lymphatics going to the axilla and we have our nodes. So you can imagine we have to inject some dye near this tumor, and then that dye is going to drain to these nodes and tell us which of these nodes are the sentinel nodes and which are not. So we'll use uh, multiple dyes. Typically one will be blue, either uh, lymphogerin blue or isosulfan blue. One will be radioactive or a radio tracer. And so when you're looking in the axilla, you're looking for nodes that have one of three characteristics. They can be blue, they can be radioactively hot, or they can be clinically suspicious. And that just usually means big, hard, and bulky. And I should say that these hot lymph nodes, uh, if you remember a number cutoff, remember 10%. So one node's gonna be your hottest node and any node that's greater than 10% as hot as that hottest node also needs to come out. So we inject these dyes and then we look for them within surgery. Uh, we get a sampling of nodes uh, and that's gonna tell us uh, if we get an adequate sample or not. And it's also important to know if you 
cannot find any nodes that are blue, hot, or clinically suspicious, then your uh, sentinel lift node biopsy has failed and you have to go ahead and progress to do that full um, ax dissection. All right, so now we've talked about our four main options. We have our mastectomy, our partial mastectomy for our primary lesions, and our ax dissection and our sentinel lymph node biopsy for our nodes. Uh, and so what are the most common combinations that we see and what are the names for those? So I'd say the most common is um, a small early stage breast cancerous cot and you're able to do a fairly minimally invasive surgery. And that would be a partial mastectomy plus a sentinel lymph node biopsy. And that's probably the operation I've certainly seen the most in my surgical career. Uh, and that allows us to avoid the morbidity of an axillary dissection, uh, as well as perform breast conserving therapy. Another option you can see that's on the other end of the spectrum is called a modified radical mastectomy. And what that means is you do a full mastectomy and an axillary lymph node dissection. And so if, if you hear the terms modified radical mastectomy, that's what they're referring to, the combination of a mastectomy, taking out the entire breast, as well as those axillary lymph nodes. A little uh, bit of trivia is that those are levels one and two lymph nodes. The breast has levels one, two, and three, uh, but for breast cancer, we typically only take out uh, lymph node levels one and two. So if you hear about a mastectomy that's not referred to as a modified radical mastectomy, then you still have to figure out what they did with the nodes. They could have potentially um, done a sentinel lymph node biopsy, uh, or in certain situations, they don't sample the nodes at all. Uh, so just keep that in mind. Uh, if you hear modified radical, that's the one situation where you know they did an ax dissection and uh, mastectomy. All right, so we've talked about the different types of surgeries, and now uh, just really bare bones, broad strokes, how do we use these surgeries? So there's two main lesions uh, in the breast cancer spectrum, and that's DCIS or ductal carcinoma in situ, which is essentially a precancerous lesion, and then ductal carcinoma. So anytime you have actual cancer, which is what we're referring to with this ductal carcinoma over here, you have to take out both the primary lesion and we have to sample the node somehow, either by a sentinel lymph node biopsy or an ax dissection that we talked about. However, DCIS is just a precancer. It's not a cancer yet. So all you have to do is take out the DCIS with either a mastectomy or a partial mastectomy, but you do not have to sample the nodes in DCIS. One exception to this that comes up enough that I want to bring it up here is if you do a mastectomy for DCIS, uh, you cannot come back and do a sentinel lymph node biopsy later. So for example, if you did a mastectomy and the pathology showed an invasive cancer, you would want to go back and sample those lymph nodes, but now there's no breast tissue for you to inject your dyes into. Uh, those lymphatics leading to the axilla have been disrupted. So you would be forced to do an axillary dissection, which we typically want to avoid if we can. So if you're doing a mastectomy for DCIS, you actually add a sentinel lymph node biopsy. Uh, so you can, uh, so if the final path ends up being cancer, you will have already sampled those lymph nodes and won't have uh, burnt your bridges as far as doing a sentinel lymph node biopsy. All right, and then, so to finish up, we'll just touch on a little bit of high yield anatomy that frequently comes up. So we talked about the big side effects being lymphedema and then injuries to nerves. So you want to know the nerves that can be injured and the potential injuries that go along with it. So the first one is the intercostal brachial nerve. This is usually the least severe. Um, it's an extension of the intercostal nerves to the skin. So that's usually just some arm numbness um, and doesn't have uh, too, too many long-term functional effects. The long thoracic, this should be a classic uh, step one question. So that innervates the serratus anterior and an injury to that will lead to a winged scapula. And then finally, we have the thoracodorsal. This innervates the uh, latissimus dorsi and can lead to issues with uh, extension, adduction and internal rotation uh, via the latissimus, leads to weakness there. Uh, I always found it hard to remember all those uh, together, but um, something I heard recently was that if you've injured your thoracodorsal nerve, you're going to have trouble wiping your butt. So there you go. Extension, adduction, internal rotation all together. Uh, hopefully that helps you remember that. And then finally, uh, people will frequently ask about the boundaries of the axilla. And this is 
in my mind, a really difficult area to visualize. And the best thing I can think of is thinking of it as a pyramid, uh, where the base of the pyramid is essentially the skin that you have, that you kind of think of when you think about your armpit. Um, and then the point of the pyramid is kind of just deep, that space where your armpit kind of goes into the chest, for, for lack of a better word. So if this is your skin right here, and you think about that pyramid shape going into the uh, axilla, then you obviously have an anterior border here. That's going to be the pectoral muscles. And the posterior border in that same orientation is going to be your latissimus dorsi. When you think about your kind of medial border, that's just going to be your chest wall and uh, your serratus. And then there's kind of this top or superior border, and that's typically defined uh, as the axillary vein. Um, so overall, I think it's a really difficult uh, area anatomically to visualize. Um, and I know there's a bunch of different books that will describe the boundaries of the axilla in different ways. That's just one way that worked for me in terms of being simple enough where I can actually remember it and also giving, giving me some insight into that uh, orientation. All right, so that's it. Um, remember, these videos are for educational purposes only. Do not use them to diagnose or treat any disease. We'll see you next time.